Welcome to 3D Amazon FBA. Today I'm going to show you guys how to um, list products using Inventory Lab. So what you do, so I've already logged into Inventory Lab. Up here is List, List and Prep. So you hit that. It'll take you to the screen that I'm on now. Okay, so then once it's ready, and it's being slow, um, you hit New Batch. So hit Create down here on the bottom. All right, so I'm only going to list a few things just for tutorial. So it's not going to be like a big shipment or nothing. So these are just some stuff I bought a few months ago waiting to get undated from Nintendo. So they should already be in the, my system for what I paid for them. So you scan it or you 10 key it in if you don't have a scanner. You hit select. So this is a rank of 635. So I'm going to delete matching MSU S and uh, our MSKU and create new. So with some items, they want uh, a label printed for them and some they don't. So you can see how replenish is um, like I can't click on replenish. So that means when I inputted it in the system before when I was still gated, um, it didn't take a Amazon barcode, but now it does. So hit delete and delete. So you don't do that very often. It's just whenever Amazon didn't use the barcode before to them using a barcode now. So I paid $5 each for these here. So the date purchased, I don't remember the date purchased. I don't usually even worry about that. As you can see, it shows 10-8-2018. So expiration date. So if you're doing, say, pet food, some vitamins, grocery, you would input an expiration date. Anything that takes an expiration date, has to be 120 days out from today. So I wouldn't be able to send anything out that was expiring prior to, I believe, January 9th at the time of recording of 2020. But obviously, there's no expiration date on a video game. And then you put in the store. And the reason why you put in the store, because if you watch my other videos, I'm always preaching about you know, get some replenishable items, get replenishable items. You need to run your business with replenishable items. If you don't put where you bought it from, you might not remember where you bought it from. And then you're like, damn, that sold really good. Where did I get that at? And, you know, it's not really good for your business to not know if you want to repurchase product. So always make sure you put in the supplier. Okay, then... That's pretty much all you do. If you're selling like used books or like used video games, you can sell used video games. You would change the condition down here to whatever it is. Okay, so here's where you set the price. So here is, see that's an, ex, A is probably acceptable. So here a new price is 38.50. So that's what I'm going to add. So you never want to go below the current buy box. You don't want to take the price because that will set off everybody's repricer and everybody will be racing to the, the bottom price. So you always set your price to the buy box price. I can't stress that enough because you're costing yourself money if you don't sell it at the current buy box price. I mean, there's no doubt there's going to be some other person racing to the bottom eventually on a lot of items, but you don't want to be that person. You want to maximize your profits. You always want to maximize your profits. All right, so here's another game. So this one I paid three bucks. I actually bought this when I was on vacation in, um, in Phoenix. So this one's selling currently for $14.39, and you could tell when I scanned it in, it was selling for $18.97. So the price has actually dropped $4 since then but I'll still make $5 on it. So go ahead and add to batch. Huh, that's weird. The Wii Sports shows no label. But 
That's okay. That means it'll ship together. And then this one. This one's selling for... See, this one, I when I originally inputted it, it was selling for $29.48. And now it's going for $32.99 as the buy box price. So that's good. Just more money for me. Change the quantity because I got two of them. Oh, one thing I do need to point out is right here, prep type. It'll tell you what kind of prepping you have to do. It'll tell you if you need to poly bag it, if you need to label it, if it needs bubble wrap. It'll tell you exactly how Amazon wants you to send it to them. And it's very important you follow those directions. All right, so hit add to batch. Okay, so this is what I was telling you earlier, how this one takes a man, uh, I mean, uh, an Amazon label now, or a barcode. So let me go back. So that's when I, you scan it back in if you get that message. Delete matching MSQ. So that one I paid $5 at the Walmart store, $32.99. Add to batch. So print two. So I have two Dymo printers, so you always you don't want to waste your paper or whatever. So this is what I use for the Amazon barcodes. So the label I use is two and one eighth. And for some reason, mine doesn't print up properly, so I had to scale mine down to 58% size. I never could figure out why it doesn't print properly at regular size, but it is what it is. So, printed up my labels, and I've got one more game. This one at Walmart, sell for $19.25 at the batch. Okay, so now that I've got all that listed, you, so let me go over this on the bottom. So I have four different SKUs for six items. This will tell you your sell, average sales rank, how much it's going to sell for, you know, at its current price. I pay $28 for this, and my net profit is going to be $96.85. So this tells you all the information down here on the bottom of what you're shipping out. Oh, that looks like my battery is about to die, so let's make this quick. So this will tell you, you know, just to double check, if you made a mistake, hit list and prep, and you can go back. All right, so review batch. There's no mistakes, so go ahead and hit submit. So hit sync. So now what it's going to do is it's going to communicate with Amazon. So now Amazon is telling me this is where I want you to send your stuff. So they want me to send one item to here, three to here, and one to here. So... At this point, you have to create every shipment. I'm not going to send any of these out, but so you have to create it. So once you create, oh, I missed one. Hit inner box content, contents. So here you would go through and put, you know, I'm going to put one in that box. So if you wanted multiple boxes, so like when I ship to Rialto, which is LGB8, is where I send most of my stuff, you'll hit new. So now when I go to assign a box, it'll give me the option, box one, box two, however many boxes you go up to. Like I sent out a shipment yesterday that was eight boxes. So what I do instead of making things complicated is if I have 50 items, I'll fill up my first box 
and then I create the second box. And then I fill up that box and I create the third box. Okay, so once you're all done with this, you know, you'll hit transmit all boxes to Seller Central. You know, since I'm not shipping any of this out, I'm not going to do that. So then from there, you go to Seller Central. You manage shipments. So here you can see these are the four shipments that I just inputted. So now you're on this screen. Inventory Lab will track every piece of information, every unit, everything to um, Seller Central. So you can only use FedEx now. So here, the information's not here because I didn't, I'm, I didn't submit any boxes. So here it'll say one box, 10 boxes, whatever you got going. You would input the weight and the, the three side dimensions of the box. So, you know, your, your uh, height, width, and um, length of your boxes. All right, so once you input all of that, you can kind of see where it says calculate here. You hit calculate and it'll say, I don't know, $15 for your, your shipment or $5 for your shipment, whatever it is. And then you hit confirm to purchase that shipping. So once you've paid for the shipping and that money doesn't come out of your bank account or anything like that, it comes out of your seller central account. So if you have say $100 of money in your seller central account, then you'll have 85. So you don't pay out of pocket, it comes out of the money Amazon owes you on your next disbursement. So then once you, you do that, you hit box labels, you want to use a four by six um, label for your um, for your shipping label because that's the just the right size for it. So get a four by six label, print up your label, you know, tape up your box, put the label on it, and you're all set. So I'm going to show you, since I'm not going to send out these shipments, you know, you hit complete shipment if you're sending it out. Like me, I don't want to send this out. It just doesn't make sense to pay $5 to make eight. So you just hit delete shipment. And Amazon knows you're not sending that out. And that's how you ship out uh, an order to Amazon. If you guys have any more questions on this topic or you have any videos you, you would like to see or something you want to learn, Go ahead and leave a comment down in the description below. If you guys can like and subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I also have a Facebook group I just made like a week or two ago. And I want to build a community of people helping each other and a real supportive community. So if you guys want to join my Facebook group, I'll post videos there. I'll post bolos. I'll answer any uh, questions and um, things like that. So if you guys can like and subscribe, join my Facebook group, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for your time watching.